I'll, I'll leave my audio on my, on my end. Um, you can mute it on your end just so that way you're not having to hear me on like the phone and the computer at the same time. Okay, so. On the computer, just mute it. You know, there's like a little, um, yeah. a little speaker, just tap on it. Let me know when you do that. Yeah, you're good. So you you could turn off your audio on the booth. Um, you could, we'll we'll just stay on the phone though. Yeah, because sometimes it kind of gets like a little <clears throat> sketchy. Okay, cool. So um, on your on your Zoom, can you click on the share screen button? So you see when I clicked on share on my end, you could see like my screen. Okay, so now I'm able to actually view the entire photo booth from here. And then on my end, I'm gonna request remote control. Um, so that way on I can control on 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 my end over here. Okay. okay perfect. All right, so I'm gonna go to that email that I sent you, the Zoom link really quick. And I had sent you this folder. And this folder, um, we're gonna download it really quick. We're gonna use this. Um, this is a bunch of templates that we've already made for you. So what we're gonna do as we start downloading Darkroom and setting the, the setting up the booth for you to use, it's gonna be so easy. like. All you're gonna have to do is turn on your booth, throw your photo strips, uh, your make your photo strip, and um, you're set. Like you're ready to go because we're gonna set everything up, and you don't have to do any like preliminary set steps. After this, you should be like, log in, create your photo strip, launch your event. It's gonna be that fast. All right. So the first thing that we're gonna do first is um, let me close that. I'm going to download Darkroom first. And all of this stuff, you don't need to take any notes. Um, if you want to, you can, but this everything that we're, we're going to do right now, it's a one-time thing, so you never have to do it again. So what I'm going to do first is download Darkroom. That's the actual software that we're going to be using. And we have Zoom already, which is good. All right, so we'll let that finish downloading. We have Zoom already. <clears throat> you have a Gmail account, right? Yes, I do. Okay, so we'll just download Chrome too. I like to have... Okay, we're gonna download that too. And then once they're done downloading, we're gonna install them. So let's see what we have here. We're waiting on those. All right, so in the meantime, well, that's well, that's working. There's a couple things that I'm gonna do. And again, you don't need to remember, but I'm just gonna just walk you through it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a folder on my on the main desktop. So we'll click on desktop. You could right click on it and create a new folder. This folder, it's gonna be called event photos. And later on, we're gonna be using that folder to throw all of our pictures into that folder and then we're going to transfer that folder to let's say if the clients or the client at the end of the party is like hey I want to I want to um transfer all the pictures to a flash drive 
you're going to use that folder to just drag and drop. Okay. Drag and drop. Simple. Yeah. So that's one. Number two, we're going to go over here since it's still downloading. And I'm going to check settings. Okay. So under your settings, you're already connected to Wi Fi, which is good. But what you're going to do is just hit retry all. And you're going to want to make sure that your Windows is up to date as much as possible. Um, and the reason for that is if you, let's say if you're running an old version of, of Windows and Darkroom is at, is, is, is at its latest version, which is what we just downloaded, there will be some type of like hiccup or some type of bug or something that isn't, you know, working correctly. And that's because the Windows updates. So number one, I would say put a reminder or put a little star next to your notes and just make sure you update at least if if it's if it's a it's a difficult thing, maybe like one once a month, you know. Um, I have my my reminder set on my phone for every two weeks, um, just so that way I don't have any issues. And that means if I don't have any issues, then my customers are going to be the photo booth's going to be running perfectly fine at the event, right? Yes. Okay. Cool. So that um, I think we'll just hit retry. Let that roam in the background. Other than that, in the background, you don't really need to do much back there. Let's see if how we're doing over here with our downloads. Okay, so we'll open up Chrome, we'll hit run. And then now we're gonna do dark room, same thing. Open file, run. And what we're doing is installing both of these apps. This is probably some basic stuff, but I just wanna kind of walk you through everything that I'm doing. All right, and we're gonna install it. <clears throat> I think. Wait for it to finish. Okay, so there's dark room right there. I'm gonna double click on it. I don't know why this Zoom workspace is still in the way. Oh, let's cancel, close it. Okay. You got it? Okay. Yes, I just wanted to close it up. Okay, so the one of the first steps that we're, I'm gonna just kind of walk you through really quick is um, you're going to have an activation code. I'm not going to do it over the um, on this video just because I don't want other people to know your code. And we're going to, but I'm going to just show you right here. If I click on yes, this is where you're going to type in your license code. We'll do this at the end of the, at the end. And then you're going to just type in your password, very basic, simple password, put it in your notes. So that way you don't forget it, fill all this information out. And once you do this, your account is going to be activated. So that means that this software is now going to be licensed under you specifically. Okay. So, um, and another thing, when you're activating dark room, you'll have one year of free updates. After that, you're kind of just stuck where you're, where you were at, where you were last at. The good thing about like, let's say for instance, after the year's up, what happens? Do you get kicked out? Yes or no? No, you don't get kicked out, but you don't get access to any of like the new features that are being, you know, distributed at the time. Exactly is Darkroom. Like how would I describe it to sure. let's say here? Okay, so Darkroom is the photo booth software that you're going to be using. That is the application that's gonna be running the whole photo booth series let's say or session you if you want to call it that so darkroom is the app that we're going to be creating photo strips as well as emailing and texting our clients the the photo strips as well as personalizing the whole photo booth experience does that make sense yes okay cool all right so uh, let me see. There's a something else that I downloaded. 
Yeah, okay. this. So what I downloaded, um, this folder right here, I'm going to hit extract. And this, if you ever, um, you, you won't need it, but if you'll ever need to download this again, you can either one, have us email it to you, or if you have access to the membership, it will also be there too, in case you need it, it is there. So all these files are there. And so what this folder is, are pre-made photo strips. So we, we just try to make a bunch of different designs for you. So that way you, you don't have to do so much design work, okay? Um, so it's just, a, it's something that we just, I feel like our customers, anybody that has this, they need to be prepared. Um, and we just try to have you guys be prepared in like the most easiest way. So what I'm gonna do right now is once I extract this folder, it's now giving me access to all my templates. So let me open up this template. And again, this stuff you don't have to remember, but I always like to go over it. I'll try to move this down. I'm gonna say maybe I wanna do, could I possibly do everything through my phone and also download Darkroom through my phone and then it will automatically save to the photo booth if I ever do wanna mess around with it? So dark dark room won't go on your phone um okay. that's only a windows based uh option so but what you can do on your phone is if you have canva photoshop bazaar or any type of art um editor you can uh -huh. you can make your photo strips from your phone email it to your computer and then just upload it into darkroom so that, that's another option that you could do. And I'll send you a video on how to do Canva to Darkroom. It's really easy. All right, so um, before we get into Darkroom, I one of the things that you need to know about Darkroom, it's kind of like a flash drive. You know how you connect a flash drive to your computer and then there's like, an, a multi, like there's multiple disk drives like you see on your screen? So Darkroom's drive is the local disk drive X, okay? And inside of that X drive are all these folders, which are your event folders, your photo booth screens, your templates, which are like the two by six and four by six templates. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just open up your booth screens and just show you all the different files that are in here. I've already made a couple different um, designs. So I'm just gonna grab mine and I'm gonna throw them in here. You already have some in there. Let me go back over here. I have some mirror booth templates. And you'll see in just a moment, once um, we start opening them up into Darkroom, they all look a little weird just cause they're just little, they're just file names. But when they're inside, like for instance, that B, the B ones, that one's pretty cool. All right, let me go back one more time. And now I'm gonna drop in your templates, which are the photo strips. So once you do this, I don't have to go back and do it. Correct. This is a one-time thing. And these are just templates that we, we think you should have for sample. Okay, so now that I'm done, I'm just gonna close both of them. I don't need that anymore. Now I'm ready to go back into Darkroom and actually run Darkroom. So I'm gonna, go through this whole tutorial at the end you're going to realize it's like it's going to be a lot in this in this video or this session but I'll, it's going to be it's going to be done for you like all the settings are already going to be preset and ready for you okay so first thing up here you see this black bar on top this black bar is going to be your menu bar and so what we're going to do is first i'm going to click on that menu bar and create an event this event, I'm going to call it two by six events, right? So any event that we that we're going to be doing that the customer's asking for a two by six, we're going to be using this event folder. Okay. So when I say event folder is all these folders right here. One, two, three. They're all different. You see that as you select them, they're all different. Okay. So 
the one that we're going to be using is this two by six. The first thing we need to do is click here onto settings. We're going to go to screens. And our screens, it's going to give you two options, edit or choose. First, we're going to choose one. And you have the LRG mirror booth. These are the ones that we uploaded, the B background, as well as the wedding ones and summer and all these different ones. But this is the template that we're going to be using, this right here, the B. Once I select it once, click choose. Now that I'm done with that, I'm going to go back over here, settings, click on output, which is our, the next one. And here I'm going to enable some settings. Again, you don't have to remember, but I'm just going to set these up so that it's ready to go. So it's one, two. I'm going to enable the printing, which is the first one, the email, which is the second, the text messaging, which is the third. We're going to do save output one. And what this is, is giving you the option to save all the pictures while Darkroom is running to that folder that we designated in the desktop. Remember that one? The event folder that, that we made? So as the party's going, everybody's taking pictures, all the pictures are being sent to that folder as an additional copy. This one is sending the individual copies. So like if someone's like, oh, I love photo number two, can you blow it up? Yes, you can. You can make it into a bigger photo strip and you could charge more for it. Okay, so these will always stay on. The next thing we need to do in this page is your template. So you see here on your templates, it says none, auto, and custom. As a photo booth company, we are always going to be doing custom photo strips for every single event. Okay, so always leave it here on custom, and then you're going to click on choose. After you click on choose, you're going to see all these different photo strip samples that we've dropped in here for you. You could use any design that, you, you, that you'd like. Just make sure once you start setting up your booth, take pictures before you start. So that way you can test out the lighting. If there's any print mistakes, if there's any text, you know, errors, you can go in there and change it. Okay. So right now I'm going to select the two by six photo strip that we had made for this event. And if I single click it, I'm going to click here, choose. Okay. Now, because you have a mirror booth, you see the difference between these photo strips, how they're in like the vertical orientation versus this one. These are the horizontal orientation. Your booth your camera is going to be set up in this orientation. So these photo strips are usually the ones that will match your booth, correct? So just to show you up close, the photo strip is just sideways. And you can grab these images right here, make them bigger, you can make them smaller, you can move them left, you can move them right, anywhere you want. You could also add in more text. And you can just type in like testing one, two, three, four. You can also change the color of the text. You could um, draw shadows underneath. Oh, come on, there we go. You can um, single space, multi, multi space. Like there's so many different options that you could choose from down here. You can add a drop shadow on it. You can add an outline. There's just different options that you can choose from. So every time you do one, just test it out just so you could see. Once I add it in there and I'm ready to go, let's say I'm ready and I'm gonna hit save and choose. Whatever is being displayed here on this screen right here where it says sweet as can be, whatever's displayed here is what's going to print, what's going to email and what's going to text and what's also going to be saved into those event folders. So it's doing one, two, three, four, five things for you while it's running. Okay. Um, another feature that I want to go over, moving over to camera. Can you confirm your camera is connected? Yes, it is. Okay. Can you go ahead and turn it on for us, for, please? And a couple things to remember about your camera. Just like your phone, after you send a text or something, it goes black, right? It goes on standby mode. Yeah. Your camera does the same thing. So if it wasn't being used, 
like it's it's not like you just turned it on and you haven't opened up dark room it will turn off right away after 15 seconds but to give you some reassurance once you open dark room turn on your camera it will never deactivate it'll always be connected all right so this is what your camera settings are typically going to look like when you're indoors. So like if you're indoors right now and you're using your flash, this is what your camera settings are going to look like. All right. Next, we're going to the live view option. So I'm going to click on settings again and go to live view. And the thing that I need to enable here is this. Always on before and during. What's up? This will always be set already? Correct, yes. So one of the things that we're going to have enabled is always on before and during. We're also going to enable this external flash mode. If you do not use that, then your flash will not work. Now I'm going to click on test. OK, so you're sideways. So let's now go to our vertical. Let's change our camera orientation. You're upside down. Now we're going to go vertical flipped. And again, you don't need to remember, it's already set. All right, now that we're done with that, I'm going to go back over here. Any questions on that? Again, you don't have to remember any of this. I just want to now show you how the photo booth is going to launch. But any questions so far? No questions. OK, I'm going to hit Start Booth. It says no accounts activated. OK, that's fine. We'll set that up in just a moment. So now we've already submitted our screen. This is what you're, you can do this. This, you see how it says sweet as can be? So what your job is to one, design the photo strip and two, design your screen. And you don't necessarily need to design a screen like this if you want, you could just have it blank if you wanted to. Okay, but um, what's, I think it, it looks nice. And when, like I know that the, the party, the baby shower, the mom and dad, like they were super happy to see that it matched the rest of their theme and they gave us a great review and the whole personalization, a lot of photo booth companies, they don't do that. So I would suggest try to do it just to kind of pick up your price and all that. So go ahead and hit the filter button. So you could see you have different color filters and if you, I'm gonna click it one more time. It goes to sepia and then it goes to retro and then back to color. And then once you're ready, go ahead and hit start. Okay, is this normal? Yeah. Perfect. All right, so now you're gonna get ready. This is where you'll have your customers take their picture. Within the time frame, um, it'll flash. If you don't have your flash on, I'll send you a video on how to set up your flash. It's pretty simple. It's like a two to three minute setting. We obviously can, uh, with the flash on, it's gonna be way brighter. <clears throat> but this is what your customers are gonna go through. This is what they will see. This is what's called your live view screen. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then um, now that this is done, it's just gonna cycle back to the beginning. Okay, so at the end, where can customers, like, let's say I was just a customer, where would I send it to myself? Okay, good question. So what we're going to do is um, go ahead and click on the top right-hand corner of your screen. It's like right where the little beehive is or the little honeycomb. Okay, so that is an exit button. If you, let's say you're like, oh, I forgot to set up my... Like right now, we didn't set up our email account, right? So we're, that's what we're going to do now. Do you have a business email account? No, we like can't a, set one up. No? Okay. All right. No worries. Do you have an idea of what the name is going to be? Yes. Um, S-O-H-L-E. S-O-H-L-E. Um, and then uh, I'll just type in your email for now. And then how would I go and... Yep, I'll show you that right now in just one moment. What was your email again? Uh, oh, there it is. Okay. 
Okay, um, I'm gonna hit okay. But so anytime everybody gets an email and text message, oh shoot, you know what? Hold on, I don't think you have it. Let me see. Also, I've been having difficulties with my printer. Okay, we'll take a look at that in just a moment. Yeah, it's not gonna save because I have to activate your booth. But if you ever need to go back and change the email, you're just gonna, so remember this black bar on top? Right here where it says global settings, you're gonna click that and you're gonna click here on email accounts and then just double click on this, put your business name here and your email here. Oh. And there's a video too, if you ever, if you forget. Um, but yeah, set that up and then your printer, Mm -hmm. Everything's still gonna stay, right? Everything that Correct. Stay. Yes. It, yeah. Everything will still stay. Okay. Um, to add your printer, you're gonna click right here under printer options. Click add printer, and you're gonna see your printer right here, DMP RX one, and then you're gonna click add printer. Once you already add it, it's gonna be right here. Is Oh yeah, it is connected. So the way we can tell is it's connected. It shows us your serial number. It shows me how many prints you have remaining, how many you've done in the lifetime. And when it says recent, let's say you're at an event, it'll tell you at the end of the event, you did five, 500 prints, 200 prints or whatever the case may be. This is also good for you to, um, let's say if you've done already like two to three events already on that same paper and ink, and you're not sure if you have enough for like a 300 person wedding, you come here and it'll tell you how much remaining you have. Okay, awesome. All right, so talking about printers, what I'm gonna do is print something for you really quick. Oh. So the way to do that is, let me see, I think we have one photo strip made already, right? Yes. So I'm gonna just click on print and then select the picture that I want. I'm gonna click here and then reprint, hit one, and that should trigger your printer to start printing. Just gonna double check to see if we get any errors. But so far, any questions on how to set this up? Okay, cool. So just to wrap up really quickly, um, I'm going to close this like if we're starting all over again. Um, no? Okay. Give me one sec. Are there any... Um, oh, you know what? Did you connect on your printer? It, there's the power button, the, the power cord, right? You connected that? Everything's connected. I have a green light. The only thing that I don't know where to put is the disc, the driver. Oh, you don't need that. Yeah, you, you don't need that. Um, But you will need the second cable, which is a USB cable that came with it. Yeah, so the USB cable is connected, and then it goes down and connects to the computer. It doesn't go all the way in. Yeah, just make sure... Um. Because you know how there's like a up the upright side and the other side. So to try to make sure it just matches. One of my co other customers was like shoving it in and ended up breaking their USB port because they were putting it in wrong. What is going on with Darkroom? So this, this is kind of normal with Darkroom with it not responding. Normally you just close it out and then just reopen it. Okay, so what right now, once um, it could also be all those updates that we just did earlier today on the windows. See if you can um, click and hold that red icon at the bottom, the dark room and close or force close. Close window. Close program. 
So whenever this happens, it's just going to close down on its own. And then we're going to go ahead and double tap. Or oh, actually, you know what? Since we're right here, click on event photos. I just want to show you. Yeah, the folder. Just double click. And you're going to see um, all of our pictures. They're upside down because the booth isn't activated on our code, but I mean, on the, the darkroom code. But I'll give it to you right when we, before we get off. So that way you could type that in. So I just want to show you that they're there. OK, and that's where all the pictures are going to drop through. Now I'll click on darkroom and let's open darkroom. That's fine. Just hit OK. OK, once I give you the code, you're going to click on activate for right now. Let's hit start trial. All right. Now let's, do you remember how to get to your photos, how to see your photo strips? What, which one's going to um, be printed? Oh, you can close that. Uh, go back to events in the center. Yeah, so that's the folder. Now we're going to click on, remember the black uh, menu bar, there's photos, prints, and settings. We're going to click on settings. Okay, so that's our screen menu. Go ahead and click on that settings button again. So this menu will pop up and you're going to go to output. So the one that we're on right now is the screen. So if you want to design this on like your phone, I'll give you the temp the the template measurement on this one is going to be 1080 by 1920. So make sure you write that down and when you're designing that's the that's the pixel measurement that you're going to be setting up. And then you could do whatever design, but just keep in mind that other like the start button is going to be there, the filter button, the live view button, you know, all of that's going to be there. Okay. Oh, this is their countdown. That's what that's what gives you like that five, four, three, two, one. So this normally what I'll do is just move this like in the center so that way people can see it on when they're being displayed. Okay. So what your job is just to do this, click on this background, delete it. Now you have a blank one. You can hit add text and type in happy birthday. And if you want to change this text to blue, hit okay. Okay. There it is. And let's say we want to go bigger. We could double click on it. And maybe go, let's go 30, maybe go bold and go a little thicker. And then with these, you see how like the text box is kind of cutting it off. So I'll do something like that. Or I could do something like this too. If I want to have like a, a cut layer, split it, hit the middle center alignment. And then open this. And then the photos one, two, and three, that's where your clients are able to see themselves. So there we go. And I now that I'm done with this, like now that I've edited my template, I'm going to hit save as and save this into my booth screens. And I'll label this maybe like happy birthday, HBD. So that was creating a template. That was creating a screen template, yes. And so now that I'm done and I hit saved as, now when I hit start booth, it's gonna be a different template, which is this one. So depending on if you're gonna be doing happy birthday or a wedding, this is where you're gonna come and customize your main screen. So that's job number one for you. Job number two is now over here settings output you remember this your photo strip this is your second thing that you're going to make so again click on choose 
here's my template, but here's a blank one. So I'm going to double click on this. And let's say, you know what, now I want to get a little creative, right? So I'm going to go to Google, google.com. I'll type in some like leaves, PNG. PNG images are like just literally cut out images. So like if I click on this and I right click, I hit save image as. I'm sure you've done this on like your computers and stuff, right? You download it um, into your downloads, make sure it is a PNG. And then maybe this, we could just label it like leaves or something. Save it into our downloads. Now I'm ready to go back to dark room. And let's say now I wanna add some like leaves in here, right? So down here, there's another template. I mean, another menu bar for your template. You're gonna click on add artwork. This button is gonna be like your key thing of importing logos, pictures, and any artwork that you want to incorporate into your photo strip. Okay, perfect. So let's say a company wants their name on it. I will just ask them to send me a PNG of their company logo. Correct. A PNG. Sometimes some companies don't have PNGs. They'll have JPEGs. I mean, we can, we can put anything on here pretty much. Okay. So once you hit add artwork, this will pop up. Um, then you're going to hit browse. And I'll use this drop down menu here to select our downloads. That's where I saved it at. I'm going to change this to an icon so that way I could see the image. Yep, that's it. So I'm going to click on that. And you see how it looks like it looks cute, right? Like you can literally make photo strips from here. So I can click up here. There's another menu bar up here and I could do rotate. Now I'm going to put one over here. Probably make it. So you can kind of sit here for a while and get, you know, as creative as you can. And then if you can go on your screen and zoom in and out of that image, just like you were to do on your phone. So you see how you can do that and you can change the, the size of this. And then if you have a keyboard or something, you can either move these things around and let's say, you know what, I want to add that to the other side, right? So you can select the image. Also, if you see on the top right, you see this template items. Mm -hmm. You see right here where it says template list, your items. These are all your individual items. So that's photo one, two, three, and then this is your leaves image. You can right click on it and you can hit duplicate. Another way to do that, I'm just gonna do something really quick. Hold on, I'm gonna hit undo. Another way to do it is if you click and hold onto your item, same thing, you'll be able to, well, one, select it, right click on it, and you can duplicate it. Or you could also do this at the top, hit edit, duplicate. So there's like three different ways that you can do that. And then you make sure, you see how earlier you were moving two images? Make sure that just one is selected. Now we can move just this one unit. And then up here at the top, you're going to want to. Sure. Okay, sure. okay, got it. Okay. So, what I went ahead and did right now is click on rotate 180 degrees, which is like the complete opposite. Now, I'm going to move this over here. And now I can move my photos one, two, and three wherever I'd like but I'm gonna leave some room so I can add some text into there. And maybe we can just type in, um, happy earth day. And then the size, level 14, hit okay. And then on this line spacing, go single space, there it is. And same thing, you could zoom into this one too, make it bigger or smaller. And now that you're done, you can hit save as, because you want to keep that other blank template that we had, right? And maybe we can label this one leaves. And, yep, everything is by alphabetical order. So I'm just going to scroll to the top just to show you that there's our blank template that we started off with. And we always do save as for this reason. So that way we can have just more and more photo strip samples at the end of the day. 
Any questions on how to make photo strips or yeah, screens? I was actually kind of stressed out about that because I know I have zero creativity, but seeing it layered and seeing it in individual, it's not that hard. Yeah. Okay. So perfect. Good to know. So now that you've so, made it. Sorry, mm -hmm. question. So the couple photo under. Mm hmm. Yeah, any of them. So like this one right here. So you would just grab, get their image. So let's just, I'll just give you an example again. Have your customer email it to you. So you could just type in like, um, newlywed photos. Just get one. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah, let me just get rid of this because we're not going to be using Chrome anymore. We will be using Zoom a lot, so I would pin that there. And we are going to be using Darkroom, so I'm going to pin that there. But yeah, go ahead and email yourself the item, and then we'll open it up on this computer. Okay, it does not need to be. You can even send a picture from your phone if you want. Yeah, I think that's what this one to my email. Yes. Okay. So the email that we can log in here. Okay. Just. Okay. So from now on, we're going to be using Chrome. Okay. Don't use the other one. Let me just set this to default. So that way you're only using Chrome. You set to default. Perfect. Okay, we never have to do that again. All right, so go ahead and just log into your Gmail, download that file, and then we'll go back to Darkroom. I need to log in again. All right, so go ahead and um, click and hold on it and then you can save it. Save. Mm -hmm. And, and yes. then I put it where? Yep, uh, into your downloads. So it's already in there. It's already on downloads. So you could just maybe label it. Oh, it's up here. Um, it's okay. You don't need to. You don't need to label it. I'm just gonna hit save. Go ahead and hit save and let's go back to darkroom. Uh, let me, you see this little edge right here? Um, this little corner edge and you can kind of like spread it down. Oh, here we go. Yes. Okay. I think we just need a, um, here, let me just put a, come on. Just put that. Okay. So we'll hit save. Let's go to darkroom. And let's see you put that into your photo strip. Which is the graphic. Mm -hmm. You can double click on it. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the way we we're going to find it is up here. You see this little drop down menu? Just click on that and then go to downloads. And then I'm just going to change this right here. You see this little, um, you're good. I mean, let me just, you're good. Um, go back to browse. I'm just going to change this. You see this, it looks like a little um, view menu. You're just going to change this to icons so that way you can see the actual picture. That way you know you're picking the right one. Okay, go ahead and hit open. Hit okay. So there it is. So now... Um, you can move that over to the side and then on the left side, click on edit template. Where is this? Where do I go to undo? Uh, right on top. Uh, click edit. So what you're going to, um, so what I was going to tell you is at the bottom, you see where it says edit template bottom left. So, okay, so click on that and um, change the page color to let's let's do like a you see where it says page color and then choose click on that and then the the what we're doing is changing the background color so you see where okay, so it's all white one. yeah we can change it to a different color add custom colors uh huh. You can do custom colors. So like, let's say for instance, if like I'm looking for a specific Dodger blue, right? Like you can click on a certain image, uh, a certain color. And once you see this solid color right here, you can click right here, add to custom colors and it'll add itself here. So like, let's say, let me see. I don't know if I have, oh yeah, here we go. So let's say I want this shade of green, right? This right here, you have the option to increase or decrease how dark or bright the, the color is. And then you can, whatever's displayed here on this little green um, color uh, square, you can hit add custom colors. So that way you're, if you're gonna, if that's like, if you're gonna be using it like a specific color. Normally I do that for like our golds. Golds are kind of hard. Some people like hard colored, like some people say this is gold and some people are like, no, this is gold, you know, like it being lighter. Yeah. So you can just, you know, keep adding more and more, but that's just an idea of, if you want to get creative and do a colored background, and then you can move your image over, you know, to the side. And that's if you want to go something basic, right? So let's say now we want to get like even more creative with this. Okay, so I'll check this out. So I'm going to go back to Google, right? And now I'm going to type in like wood panel background. So I'm going to find a panel that I like that kind of goes with the flow. So let's say this one, right? Like this one looks really nice. The color looks good. I'm gonna right click on it, save image as, it's the same exact process. I'm gonna throw this into my downloads, perfect. And now I'm going back to dark room and I don't like the green in the background. So I just wanted to get a little bit more, you know, rustic style. So I'm gonna hit add artwork, mm -hmm. browse, there's my image, hit okay. And now I'm gonna, you could, same thing, you could zoom in so that way you can make it big. Or what you can also do is click on size, fill entire page. Mm -hmm. okay. Now we're gonna grab this layer and we're gonna send this layer to the back. So it's kind of like Microsoft Word, look at send to back, yeah. check that out. So, I mean, you could technically do something like this. And then this layer, we can go like order, um, bring to front. So we could have it overlapping and maybe have this picture just like a little bit larger than the other photo. Oh, that's cute. And um, same thing with these, like you can move these around, you can change the name. You know, you could click on it and just double check, just change the name from here. You could also change the color here. But yeah, that's another way that you can do another photo strip. And if you want to get even fancier, you could double click on these photos one, two, and three. And you see how it gives you the option to do a frame around the photo? 
it gives you the option to choose your color and how thick you want the frame to be. So now it's on five. If I hit OK, there it is. And if I want to do the same thing for photo two, three, and four, same thing, double click, draw the frame around it, hit OK. Same thing, double click, draw the frame around it. Okay. And same thing for this one, double click, draw a frame around it. And maybe this one, we want to add a drop shadow. We hit drop shadow, boom. Or I don't think the drop shadow looks cool, but take that off. But just to kind of give you an idea, this is what you guys can do with this. And then once you're done, save as, and then this one, we could do label the same thing and then just go to hit save. Now we have the first one and the second one. So that's what your main job is to do for right now. Every Everything, like I told you from the beginning, everything is already done. It's already set for you. We went through all your settings for you. You don't have to do this ever again. Um, I'm going to make it even easier for you too. I'm going to create a, another one of these, which is duplicating the entire event, everything that we did. So we don't have to sit there and do the exact same settings all over again and waste time. It's all about get in, get out, do this as fast as you can. Okay. What I did is I made another folder, another event folder for you for four by six. So let's say you're doing Amanda and Chris's event. This is a four by six. This is the template side. This is the event folder that you're going to be using for four by six events. If you're going back to two by six, two by sixes are going to be like this or like the other ones that. Okay, so remember that when you come into your event, one determine does your customer want a two by six or do they want a four by six? If they want a four by six, you're going to click on this event folder. And the first thing that you'll do here is come to choose and start designing your photo strip. Any questions? No. No? Okay, cool. All Can right. Try to get the printer? Yeah, I'm going to deactivate it and reactivate it. Okay, it says ready. All right, so we'll run this one. Go ahead and hit start. Oh, because our photo strip, you see, remember, see how this, our photo strip has three, uh, actually our photo strip has four pictures, right? Yeah. And then, so now that for me, it automatically, I have to go back to my screens and just add one more photo for, so that way they, they know it's four photos. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. Let me know if the printer's going off. No, it says paper error. Okay. Oh. Okay, no problem. So let me send you a video on how to actually put it in correctly because I think it might you might have put it in incorrectly. But as for darkroom itself, do you have any questions on that? No? Okay. All right, cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to end the video um, and then I'll send this to you. If you need to um, refer back to it, you have the option to. So let me just stop this. And then you'll send me the login for Darkroom? Yes. I'm going to send you the via text. Okay. Give me one sec. Um...